Hi, I'm Globy, the bubbler, and this is my basic technique for making a bubbling garland out of braided material and fishing swivels. Okay, the method goes something like this. I've got some braided twine here. I'm going for some 8-inch loops, that is, loops with 8-inch tops. And you can see here how the ends, I've bound the ends so they don't fray and come apart as I'm working on them. And I have some swivels, my favorites. If you can find them, they're a little hard to find, but these are um, stainless steel ball bearing swivels. Number zero is the tiniest they make, my favorite. I also have some uh, yarn for doing the whipping. This is that uh, real pretty color of the Ella Ray bamboo wool stuff. It's nice. And this stick right here, this dowel, it's a quarter inch. Uh, it's for forming the, the loops. And uh, I'll get to that right now. So I want to take a length of yarn. And with practice, you can use less, but I'm going to make this eh, something like... 16 inches long. Take one of those swivels and you notice these swivels kind of have a are sort of bullet shaped. Now they have a kind of a pointy end and a not so pointy one. All right, and we want to kind of, uh, we want to use the ring at the butt end of this thing and put that yarn through there okay now I'm using a quarter inch dowel here you can get by with a pencil it's a uh, the, the bigger the the stick the uh, easier it'll be but I'm kind of used to this I have a lot of practice <laughs> and I'm going to make a knot around the stick like that and I want it to be uh, longer on one side than the other. It's, uh, on the short side, you want to have at least four or five inches. Anyway, I'm going to tighten that up and then come back and finish it up as a square knot. Like, uh, like this. Boom. Okay, so now we have a swivel attached to a loop and my whipping material around that. Okay, you grab the braided stuff, one end of it, and we want to like place the loop on that so that the end of the loop oops so that the end of the loop comes out just a little beyond the end of the material the end of the braided stuff okay now let's see uh actually i'm gonna turn this around <laughs> you'll see it later but i want to have the longish end facing me at this point longest end near shorter end far and positioned about right and you turn it over and turn it over and make a simple overhand knot on the other side of that braided length normally i'd use my teeth here but i can get by like that yeah yeah okay so so far so good the length's about right we have an outer knot here now on the inside turn it back up so that loop and its knot are up again and take the other end of the braid making sure the braid is flat all the way across all the way down and you put it on top make a little sandwich out of that knot there and again we want to check to see if it looks as if the uh, the loop, that little yarn 
fabric loop comes out just a little bit past the ends of the braid stuff. So there we go. And now another overhand knot like this. Okay. Okay, and once again, an even nest check. It looks pretty good, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, so since it looks good, I'm going to tighten this up nice and tight. Really haul on it. As tight as I dare without breaking the thing. Okay. Now it's whipping time. Take that shorter end, which should be away from you at this point, the other side, and you form a loop out of it that goes a little bit beyond the end of there, like that. Okay, so the arrangement here, there's a loop inside my fingers, and you take the long end here, and you want to sort of tighten it up. In other words, if you twist it one way or the other, you'll notice that the yarn will get tighter or looser it will ravel or unravel and we want to tighten it up a bit because things just look prettier that way and now i just begin the process of wrapping around kind of lock down the tail of that loop that's called the pull through loop i'm going to lock down that tail and now it's round and round in concentric rows working towards the tip After I've gone around a few times you can kind of switch hands here it's convenient to switch hands this goes like that yeah okay all right looks okay so far Hope you can see that and I once again I gotta tighten this thing up and I go round and round and round and round but it's time to pick off those keeper strings otherwise we'll they'll just add unnecessary bulk to the whipping all right and now I want to go around a few more times but I don't want to go all the way to the end it's not a good idea. Don't just pop off. You have to start over again. I just want to get within reach of it. Maybe leaving an eighth inch, a couple millimeters. All right. Here we go. So there's the uh, the loop for the pull through. I take this end here, put it through there, and I pull on the other end of the pull through and lock it in. Take up the there's a little bit of slack there you can see. So I just pull on this end gently to take up the slack and then I pull the pull through through just enough to bring it in to the knot about one or two wrappings and that's all it takes yeah. and that's that's the end result it looks like this and on to the next one For each loop, you'll want to trim the tails of those whippings flush to the body of the knot. All right. Like so. And if you feel that, you know, the ends came out a little bit uneven, you can you can kind of trim them a little bit to make them more even so it's just you have kind of like the about the same amount of scraggle <laughs> all the way around yeah like that i finished these off with hot glue because well it looks slick also we don't really need absorbent material here it just has to hold the ends together so I kind of laminate it in a way, 
with uh, with glue along the whipping like so and I also do a thing where I sort of saturate the fuzz sticking out of the end here with glue but not too much sort of dab that all the way around and keep it hot for a while so it sort of saturates to the middle and then I make a sort of bullet point out of it yeah it's sticking and gross to uh, stick your hands into hot glue you get used to it but you end up with a sort of a bullet point on there and that helps with the opening of the garland it helps avoid the opening being uh, restricted by the fuzz at the end like that all right pretty good while it's still warm you can kind of shape it there that's done once you've made all the loops and there's going to be a an even number of them we need uh, half for one side half for the other side there are two sides to these things anyway uh take one of those things and the swivel at the tip and feed some yarn through it pass it through about halfway like that and this will attach to the corner of the next loop these are eight inches so i'm going to measure over eight like right there like that mark that spot with my thumb and put that swivel tip on top of it like that okay and i'm going to turn it over and make a overhand knot on the opposite side like that so i used to join this with my mouth <laughs> it feels funny okay like that so basically you, you want to get this swivels ring on the center of the flat side of that braid on the outside of the braid pull that nice and tight now the next knot is you make it hey yeah you make it on top uh towards the end with the swivel like so and you flip it over do it one more time but this time we want to make this overhand and that so it reaches over and on top of the existing one. Oh, uh, well, is that right? Let's see. That's right. You can kind of force it there with your thumbnail as you pull it tight. Okay, pull it really tight. Okay, one more. Now we go... Make another overhand knot on the top of the braid, but on the opposite side of our swivel, towards the bottom part of the loop. It goes through there. Pull that tight. Like so. Boom, boom. And I'm going to finish that knot with a square knot like so pull it really really tight there now I'm going to trim the ears off this but not too close this is a kind of a risky knot it can come loose and let's try it this way a little easier yeah like that and nip those knots off and leave a little little ears on them like that and uh, later I'm going to 
put a dab of hot glue on all these too because I uh, this nut is not not to be trusted <laughs> it isn't uh, I like hot glue better than than uh, super glue it's uh, softer it tends to create fewer snags okay I have my two halves here uh, side A side B I guess you could say these these are the tips these are going to get leaders on them and that's what will attach to the poles and these are the two setter loops you need to join them together too now and I do that kind of like the way we were joining the um, the tips to the corners except it doesn't take too much work is you measure out the the size let's see eight inches and put that thing right there and make the same kind of knot we did before okay having uh, attached the swivels to the corners of those two innermost loops the two center loops now we just have to connect them together um, now we want we can't have them too close together because then the bubble streams will join together and that's not cool because we want them to make this about the same size bubbles all the time and we also want to have all the bubble streams give out at about the same time and having the bubble streams join that interferes with it Well, around through the bigger the loops the more important it is to have some distance here there now leaders one more thing you need to know about these braided garlands with swivels is that they'll need tuning uh, when you first build them and after you use them for a while you see here if I pull on the loops on the other side see how it kind of puckers up like that that's that's bad that will interfere with opening so what we want to do in this case is want to take the nearest leader at the end and take that and feed it through going the same direction that that pucker was heading like this and now look I pull on the ends and it's nice and straight there's no puckering yeah this braid isn't flat across and that's okay that that won't mess up the opening but having that pucker will I hope you found this video helpful I know yeah the knots can take a little practice but I think you'll catch on and meanwhile uh, happy bubbling from Globy, the bubbler.